The refs were horrendous, and the contents of my garbage disposal has more class than the LSU women's basketball team. You are Locked On Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Baylor. I'm Drake Toll from Sports Illustrated's Inside the Bears. Thank you for making Locked On Baylor your first listen every single day. Kim Mulkey and the LSU women's basketball team have uh, become national champions for the first time in program history on the men's or women's side. Congratulations to Kim Mulkey, former Baylor coach, on winning this. All right, that's the most you'll get out of me from a congratulations standpoint. That is the single most abysmal, terrible, pathetic, Pathetic's a great word. Pathetic's a great word in every way. Basketball game that I think I've watched. Seldom have I watched a game, a sporting event in front of my own eyes and thought, huh, I'm passionate to, with two teams that I couldn't care less about. I am passionate about what is happening right now. But I became passionate by the end of this game for, if you watched it, the worst officiating performance um, maybe in sports history. Like we, we say, we throw that around quite a lot, but it's not even hyperbolic at this point. It was terrible, unwatchable. It was Big 12 referee level, but worse. Like I, I can't express to you. You have, and I'm going to get into this more later. I, I want to touch on the Kim Mulkey part because it's Baylor related. You have the opportunity to showcase women's basketball on the biggest stage that it's ever been on. College, women's college basketball, Caitlin Clark, LSU, Kim Mulkey. This Angel Reese was the story. This is the biggest women's college basketball game of all time. Far and away, bar none. And what happens? What's trending number one on Twitter? Not women's basketball. Not LSU. Not Iowa. Not Caitlin Clark. The referees. You stole the show. Congratulations. America's number one most hated thing in the world right now are these three officials who officiated the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship because it was terrible. Awful. It There came a point in the game, the third quarter, where it was so, it was unwatchable. The first quarter was far and away the worst. It at least got better than that, which is not hard to do. But there came a point in the third quarter when Caitlin Clark got that technical. We're all of everyone watching this game. There were a million people watching women's basketball for the first time who thought, this is what women's basketball is. Like my, my, you know what? My dad texted me. I'm going to pull the curtains back on this one here a little bit. My dad does not watch women's basketball. This is not like something that he's used to doing. Um, and, and he said, hey, I, you know, he was at my sister's game and so couldn't watch the game, but wanted to get updates on Twitter. It was like, hey, can't figure out what's going on with the game. All I'm seeing on Twitter is something about the officiating. You stole this moment from women's college basketball. You, you, the officiating crew, stole away the premier moment, the mecca. The massive, the heaven, the everything you could imagine for women's basketball. This is going to be the moment where it cements it as a an American staple. And you took it away. You took it away from those girls. You took it away from these women who've worked so hard. You took it away from universities like Baylor that are trying to put women's basketball on the map and have been doing so for the better part of two decades, over two decades now. And what's worse, if that's the number one most hated thing in America this weekend, uh, guess what's number two? Guess what? It's Kim Mulkey. She... Uh, You know, somebody tweeted me, which I thought was good. This was funny. I put out something along the lines of Kim Mulkey has become America's number one enemy. Like um, the United States detests her now. And someone sent, that's been the case always. She was just at Baylor, so you didn't know. We had the Baylor, the green and gold colored glasses on uh, while she was at BU. She is insane, man. Like tackling refs, throwing stuff crying in the middle of the game like i i'm surprised that she doesn't at some point she didn't because the refs were bad both ways that you know i don't want to make a case that the iowa lost only because of the refs the refs were bad both ways i was surprised she didn't go just like squat just you know legs crossed middle of the court in protest because kim mulkey of all people would do that um i'm surprised that iowa's coach didn't do that as well caitlin clark somebody because it was so dismal but kim mulkey the entire nation watched her tackle a ref, make calls on her own, by the way. There's a point in time in this game where Kim Mulkey herself like stops the officials for a review on something that isn't reviewable. Something that isn't reviewable. 
Like the officials like, yeah, maybe it's a common foul. We didn't call it. We can't review things that we just didn't call and be like, oh yeah, it was a common foul. Not even close to a technical with this Iowa girl, like kind of offensively, she's getting into the paint to score on the basket and she kind of elbows a girl and uh, yeah, it's toss up. And Kim Mulkey then stops the whole ass game, middle of the game. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. And the refs did it. They did it. And that just added to everybody hated the refs. And when they found out they were on Kim Mulkey's side, that Kim Mulkey and the refs were friends, that made everybody hate Kim Mulkey. I, I don't understand. Do you think she interacts with her players? Do you know the amount of things she said that are so anti-people, like anti-human beings? Um, one, I would hope there are no P- women who identify the LGBTQ plus community on her team because she's already been outspoken about that, that she doesn't really condone that. So, okay. There's a reason probably not to play for Kim Mulkey. Um, and even, even if you don't agree with that, like that's just in, in college basketball and recruiting, this is a, Hey, we're looking for, for athletes, for people, for, for, and it's like, Hey, if you're, you know, a supporter or part of this community, like this lady just doesn't really like that. Huh? Interesting recruiting strategy. Just a very interesting recruiting strategy, whether you agree or disagree, uh, whatever. Interesting recruiting strategy Two. If you are a player on the LSU women's basketball team, if you're Angel Reese, God forbid you get locked in Russian prison because that lady ain't saying crap. She couldn't give a crap if you go to Russian prison. You're done. See you later. You won her a national championship, and what do you get out of that? Obviously not a, obviously not a lifelong relationship. Do you know how many former players at Baylor have come back and been so outspoken against this lady after the things like – just not close. When's the last time you saw a player that tweeted out, like, I love Kim. The lack of support from Baylor players when she won this national championship is wild to me. So, yes, you can go co- play for LSU. Go play for Coach Mulkey because she is she is maybe the greatest coach to ever do it. Yeah, it's true. She's a hell of a coach, man. You cannot, you cannot um, deny that. She's at the top of the sport. But... At the same time, when you go play for that coach to win a national championship, I mean, good luck for any of any of the rest of your life or relationships or anything to go very well when they're based around her. Because obviously, again, by the lack of former players tweeting, the lack of people who have ever tweeted, thank you, Kim Mulkey, and congratulations to Kim Mulkey. Like, she spent more minutes on the court than Caitlin Clark did in last night's game. No technical fouls, no warning. The Iowa bench got a warning and not Kim Mulkey. She makes things so much bigger um, than her players. She Not bigger about, than her players. She makes things about her. Let's just put it pretty clear. She makes things about her. Hence, the billboard that I can see out my window that says LSU basketball national championship game, which will soon say national champions because she's like that. Um, I don't. I just don't get it. I just don't get the people that are like, I love her. I do. I love her so much. Because she doesn't like those people that go to Russian prison, and I don't either. Okay, great. <laughs> That's a, how. Why? Your your neighbor, your next door neighbor goes to Russian prison next year. I make this point all the time. Your next door neighbor goes to Russian prison. You're not gonna say anything. You're not gonna. You're not gonna be like, oh, you know, I'm gonna keep that one to myself. He did it. He went to Russian prison. So that's not my problem. That's what Kim Mulkey is doing to people who spent years of their life committed to her and helping her win national championships. So great. You want a championship for your coach. Uh, you won that not for your, like you won that for your coach. There's not there's a pretty clear divide there. So yeah, no, go play for Kim Mulkey. That's gonna be super fun. I bet you're gonna love her. Love her. She'll be in your camp. Uh the officiating was bad. It set back it may have set back women's basketball. It may have set back women's basketball. You know what's not bad, though? Built Bar. I love it. Built Bar is my favorite bar. It's the thing that I eat every morning when I start my morning. Happy National Championship Day, by the way. Uh, Built Bar, the coconut almond, the stuff's still going on. BuiltMarchMadness.com. It's still going on, this, this bracket here. And if you go in and you put in your stuff, your information to vote, then you could win a free, free, that's right. Box of Built Bar. 50 people will win that. One person will win a free 12 month subscription to Built Bar. The free Built Bar is for you to eat. You got to try Built. It's the best protein bar ever. They are amazing. You will not think that they're good for you. You won't, but they're only like 130 calories and you know, like 13 grams of protein. It's pretty nuts, actually. And it's just like four grams of sugar, less than that. It's, it's insane. What makes Built Bar so good? They are high in protein, low in sugar, 100% real chocolate. That's why I like it. Run to BuiltMarchMadness.com. Vote for your favorite bar. Coconut almond for me, my friends. Coconut almond. BuiltBar.com. Go to Sam's. Go to Walmart. Get one. 
All right, the officiating. You may be thinking today, is this just uh, Be Me and Kim Mulkey podcast? And it's not. Um, but I, after Angel Reese, the LSU player, did the thing where she was making fun of Caitlin Clark, she called her a hoe. I don't know if I can say that on this podcast, but I did. Hopefully, plug your kids' ears now. I won't say it again. But she called her that in the game. Um, LSU became America's most hated team in history over the course of the game. Um, and so I, I definitely wanted to touch on Kim Mulkey and the things and the outfits and the uh, just everything that goes on. Um, but now it is it is the officiating crew time. You are witnesses of why am I talking about women's, women's basketball and so in depth today? Number one, I'm passionate about it after watching that game. Number two, again, Baylor's been kind of at the forefront of this, but like empowering women and empowering women's sports. And I think it's such a valiant effort. Acrobats and tumbling is a great example of that. You know, Baylor has been one of the universities that's really tried, especially since 2016, to be as conducive as possible to the the rules, the the positive aspects of Title IX and further women's sports. I think it's such a valiant effort, and I think that days like yesterday are setting women back so much. Oh my God. You watch that? The officiating crew, you are, they were anticipating for this, this game. And I'm sure the numbers will come out. They were anticipating for this game to be far and away the most watched college basketball game of the year, men's or women's, especially for as bad as the final four is on the men's side. The women's got to basically take those reins here and be the apex of, of what March is this season, which I think is great. And so you get this moment where everybody is so excited to watch Caitlin Clark. Twitter's going nuts. All the barstool people who aren't always, you know, they, they all they post some weird stuff and controversial stuff, but they're on board today. Everybody who's anybody is watching women's basketball, many for the first time, not unlike my father or those who are just like my dad. They're like, oh, you know what? This Caitlin Clark girl seems pretty good. I'll turn it on. And the officiating crew decided, hmm, this is it. Everybody in America is watching this game. What can we do to make sure they know our names and they're talking about us? If that was the goal, which it really seems like it was, congratulations. You've done it. Everyone in America was talking about the officiating. It was trending over anything else. The officiating was trending over anything else in the game between LSU and Iowa because it was so bad. The Caitlin Clark should have fouled out probably. She finished with 30 points and eight assists. She should have fouled out. Um, she had a, tech, a bogus technical. She had three fouls early in the second quarter. A few different Iowa girls fouled out. And on both sides, it just didn't make any sense how, how it, it, again, it doesn't make any sense how even viral this thing went because people were so pissed. People were so passionate. They, I, I mentioned unwatchable earlier. Do you understand how many more viewers there would have been in this game had the officials not just taken it out of the hands of the players? This was not a game between five basketball players on each team. This was a game between three officials to see who could get the most attention of the three. There were not good calls. The technical on Caitlin Clark was completely unreasonable, very unreasonable. No technical on Kim Mulkey while she was doing much worse than throwing a basketball behind. That's all Caitlin Clark did was throw a basketball behind her that gave her a technical. And then Kim Mulkey goes out here and she's just flipping stuff and nothing. You know, her players are like calling, calling girls names and, and taunting. And there's so many like that. There was classless. I don't understand how this LSU basketball team, how that culture, which by the way, it was never that violent at Baylor. I don't know if it's just like an LSU thing or a Kim Mulkey thing, but it was never – the players were never classes like that. I'm not sure where that came from. I am, actually. It's Kim Mulkey. But they were so classless and tough to root for and tough to watch, and you didn't want to root for them after the game. And I hated that Holly – sweet, sweet Holly Rowe had to interview Kim Mulkey after all this. But then you couple that with the idea. This officiating crew made this game to where I, I, couldn't, I couldn't bear it. I couldn't focus on how well – Angel Reese played. I couldn't focus on the fact that, and this is just so March, Jasmine Carson comes out of nowhere. This senior coming off the bench who's averaging like, you know, what, eight points per game and then drops a 20 piece in the first half. Like, I, I, these should be the headlines for women's basketball. The headline should be women's basketball breaks record, record viewership. LSU beats Iowa. Kim Mulkey gets her fourth ring. You know, uh, Angel Reese stars. Caitlin Clark drops 30 points in the loss. She's coming back next season. There should be all these talking points that involve the women who were playing in the game 
game, but the first damn thing that everybody's got to talk about now on First Take and on Barstool and on Locked On Baylor is how bad the officials were because you took the biggest gift to women's college basketball that maybe has ever been given to the sport and you crapped all over it. There was no way to watch this game and not think about the officiating not think about how brutal it was to see the fouls that were called that just didn't exist. Kim Mulkey was obviously upset as she should be because it went both ways. The Iowa players, Iowa fans were upset as they should be. But when the number one trending thing on Twitter is referees, refs, during the biggest moment in arguably, like this is one of the top five moments in women's sports history, one of the top five events in the history of women's sports. We got to live that yesterday. And it was stolen away by the officiating crew. Why is that okay? You are setting the game backwards. When people who showed up to watch this massive sporting event came away without any ideas or thoughts on the players, but instead came away thinking the refs sucked. When that's the headline everywhere, that is not good for your sport. I don't care the gender of the officials. I couldn't give a crap less. Put robots out there to officiate. Just make it to where it's not just watchable, but enjoyable. Hell, call your own foul at this point. Because I I was so excited to see. At Baylor, we know this. We know what women's basketball can be. We know what it means to support women's basketball. We know what it means to be all bought in on women's sports and furthering women's sports. So I was so excited to see that at the forefront of college athletics this spring. This being the biggest sporting event so far in college athletics of 2023. And then how disheartening it is to see such pathetic officiating. I hope those officials have Twitter. I hope they understand what they took away from not just the girls on the court, but the girls moving forward. You you know, do you know, if this had been a normally officiated game, if the, if the trending topic was not refs, that next season, the viewership would have been high again. You know, when Kim Mulkey's back again next season, the viewership is going to be super high. People think, oh, shoot, Caitlin Clark's back. I remember how much fun it was to watch her drop 30 points last year. And, oh, what a great game between Iowa and LSU. Oh, geez, you're going to be drawn to it. You're going to be hooked to it. You're going to get more viewership. But now, I I don't care. (laughs) Next season, the Caitlin Clark and Kim Mulkey meet again? Like, yeah, I'll watch it. But with the same audience? No. Because the official, what do we show you? That women's basketball, that the best officials we have in women's basketball suck. That they're terrible and they will take away from the game. So your general viewer, your average fan is not going to want to watch that. Thus, you set this game that was on a trajectory to soar back. You have set this game back. And for that, I forgive nobody. I'm mad at everybody. This is just a mad podcast today. I don't understand how we can get right on the cusp of women's sports being better than like viewership wise, better than men's sports. Like I don't understand how we can get so close to everybody watching women's basketball and it getting to be right there is equal in March with men's basketball. We're right there. We're right there. And then it sucks. You know, it still doesn't suck. FanDuel. FanDuel is your place to go to bet on the championship game today. UConn and San Diego state. You know what? I don't care about UConn and San Diego state. Couldn't give a crap less, man. I don't want to watch it. Why would I want to watch it? What is, aside from money at FanDuel, what is in it for me? That's exactly why you need to go to FanDuel. Throw 10 bucks on UConn. Throw $1,000 on UConn. If they somehow, they somehow lose, you get a no sweat first bet. That's $1,000. That's a bonus bet back if your bet doesn't win. Download the FanDuel sports back at safe sports app. It's safe. It's secure. It's super easy to use. You can bet on everything from the money line to point scores, threes drained. You can include these like spreads or money lines. These totals, you can do parlays with rebounds and assists and player points. Uh, very much, There's exclusive bets too, like a two by three, which is two three-pointers scored in the first three minutes. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a bigger chance to win. Don't miss it right now. No sweat first bet for $1,000 back if you lose at FanDuel.com forward slash locked on. FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel. All right. Caitlin Bickle joins the show tomorrow. That should be super interesting, by the way. I have so many questions for her about all the things that, number one, she's been doing, but also about Kim Mulkey and about... About the officiating, that was so bad. Um, 
I still, guys, I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. There was just no, it's just like no class. Like LSU wins a national championship, and I don't understand how you can, you know, I mean, girls are just like chat that the chatter wasn't even half of it. Just pointing at the ring finger and like talking to other players' faces. And nobody wants that, man. If you're an LSU fan, how do you see that? And you're like, yes, this is a lady, this Kim Mulkey gal who is turning, she's churning out some good people, some real good people, some real good players. She's making it work. Um, I think it's, I just don't, I don't, I don't get it, man. Like I, that's when Angel Reese is taunting America's darling, Caitlin Clark, there is no class in that. And it makes no sense to me why that, ha- you know, and I look, I get it. Caitlin Clark's done some stupid stuff too. St- I say stupid. She's done some classless stuff too. She's, you know, she's taunted and, you know, Haley Van Lith and all that, but God bless. <sighs> I don't know. Just don't, I don't like it. Maybe you do. Maybe you're a big Eric Musselman fan. Kim Mulkey and Eric Musselman should coach at the same university. That should happen. It should. Their two teams should get to play at the same university because there's the same level of class. And it's just not, there's not a lot of class going on. And I don't, I don't like it. Maybe I'm traditional. Maybe I, maybe I need to get with the times. Maybe it's what the kids are doing nowadays is they're saying cuss words and getting pregnant. Uh, that's not me. I'm not saying cuss words and I'm not getting pregnant. I've said so many on the show. Um, so thanks for making Locked On Baylor your first listen every single day. Come back tomorrow. Hear from Caitlin Bickle um, about Caitlin Clark and LSU and the rest of that stuff. I think she was she was at the Final Four there for a while, so she'll speak on that. Um, don't miss the rest of the shows this week too. Football is back in full swing. The March, the March, the spring game is coming up here in just three weeks. They have all of the storylines leading up to that. All that and more. Don't miss it. Unlocked on. Thank you again for making it your first listen every single day. Baylor.